Good evening. The big news yesterday uh, was that the government had finally notified the changes to the to the IT rules, uh, the IT intermediary rules. And there was a great deal of interest from all our viewers on what exactly this means in terms of citizens being able to take on big tech companies, uh, the government of India being able to rein in the big tech companies, and whether these changes or this process of reining in or making these big tech companies accountable is uh, only symbolic but actually real. On that and more, I have with me today Rajiv Chandrasekhar, who is the Union Minister of State for Electronics and Information Technology as well as for Skill Development and Entrepreneurship. He's a friend, an entrepreneur, a technocrat and a parliamentarian with a very keen understanding of the changing technological landscape. Uh, Rajiv, welcome and thank you for doing this. Thank you so much. Thank you, thank you, thank you Arnav for having me. Now Rajiv, this is a long, you know, it's, it's, it's a long rule. It's the Information Technology Brackets Intermediary Guidelines and Digital Media Ethics Code Brackets Closed Amendment Rules 2002. What exactly is this about? In layman terms for our viewers, what does this do? So, uh, Arnav, there are two uh, uh, background context points that uh, probably need to be understood. Uh, number one is that in February 2021, the uh, IT intermediary rules were, not, uh, were put out and then by May 2021 they were notified. And those rules have been in force for the last year and a half. And those rules essentially laid the basis of the government of India's expectations that the internet should be in India open, safe and trusted and accountable uh, for to all the digital nagriks and for all the digital citizens of India. In a nutshell what it means is that our government, our Prime Minister who has uh, in a sense unleashed so much of innovation and the innovation ecosystem in our country uh, significantly invested in Digital India since 2015 and the results are there for all of us to see has laid out a goal and a roadmap of the next decade being a huge decade technologically from a digital economy point of view and has set a goal of a trillion dollar digital economy by 2026. Now having said that one of the enabling elements and almost one of the preconditions to that trillion dollar digital economy investments and jobs is that the internet in India remains safe and trusted that it is a place where currently 80 crore Indians are connected to use it for their lives, livelihoods, uh, subsidies, uh, education, health, all of that and by 25-26 the, that number will be 120 crores and it is important therefore that the underlying internet always is safe and trusted. Now for most part of the last three decades that I have been associated with the internet and I'm sure you have been for several uh, years the internet was always seen as a force for good it connected people it brought people and ideas together but over the last five six years there is also an underlying trend and uh, enough evidence that the internet also is a place where people are misusing the internet to cause user harm to do illegalities to, to, in a sense, uh, you know, create um, uh, models where there are illegal content, unlawful content that has been created and said. So, to address this part of the internet, to keep it safe and trusted, we came out with the rules last year. The government came out uh, under the leadership of our Prime Minister, the rules last year in 2021. But over the last 14-15 months, there has been considerable learning in terms of what the gaps in those rules were. And the current edition of those rules, which you have just referred to, the amended IT rules 2022, are rules that are, uh, are a, a step forward from where we were in 2021, addressing some of the gaps that the previous rules uh, had left unaddressed, some of the challenges that we had not foreseen. And clearly, this, this set of rules lays out more clear obligations on the part of the intermediaries whom you refer to as big tech, but they're really big tech, small tech, medium tech, uh, foreign, Indian, all of them, 
to lay the, the very in very clear terms what their obligations are and what their role is in this partnership between government and intermediaries in creating a safe and trusted internet now why why can't the government let it be uh, you you spoke about the need for trust you know it's an open internet uh, the woke argument is that wherever the government comes in it wants to interfere whereas the in principle the internet should be let free mm. the internet will not be free if the government has any supervision over it no so uh, one of the uh, one, one point i want to make very clearly uh, is that the the government is not supervising the internet the internet as i said the four boundary conditions that the government uses prime minister narendra modi ji's government uses for all policy making in the tech space is that the internet must be open i.e. free from any state or corporate influence the internet must be safe and trusted because there are real people who use the internet their safety and their trust in the internet should always be maintained and that the internet must always have a relationship of accountability between the big platforms that serve consumers and the consumers who are served by the platform so for the, there is accountability that is required i want to make very clear that the internet in uh, in its current form represents both good and there is clear evidence there is plenty of bad plenty of user harm plenty of illegalities plenty of criminalities also that is proliferating on the internet so any responsible government with a duty to its citizens will not be blind to the the challenges of keeping the internet safe and trusted what is and the bad for these rules if i may go if i may intervene you mentioned in twice measure. so sorry so, to sorry yeah. to come in but you mentioned you mentioned yeah. twice there is both good and go bad go ahead go ahead what what is what is the bad rajiv can you yes. specify some examples what do you have in mind some will say that whatever yeah, so, is whatever look, is bad the, for the, the bjp yeah, so, or for the modi government will be seen as bad by you is that what you mean by bad yeah no that that sounds that sounds uh, more like a couple sibles view of uh, all things uh, technology uh, but look we are not looking at this from an ideological point of view bad for the indian citizen bad for the digital nagrik includes cyber security cyber frauds uh, child sexual uh, abuse uh trafficking in in uh, you know in people pornography uh, invas uh, invasion of others privacy there is a whole series of things there are 10 uh, conditions that have been laid down in the rules which the uh, intermediaries are obliged to follow for example there should be no content that belongs to any other person there should be no content that is uh, obscene pornographic pedophilic invasive of others privacy uh, um, creates uh, 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 promotes enmity bet between different groups or religions uh, or, or if incites public order is against national security threatens the unity integrity defense security so there are many cases uh, arna of content just being bad content creating harm kind of either to a community or to an individual or to the country at large I, and I, that is a established jurisprudence no, there is nothing no, there is nothing but, but new now, on that but the rules go to the rules basically yeah the rules basically carve out these issues in specificity and say the intermediaries must take care yeah. that these types of content are never never find place on their platform now 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 let's i just want you bring in to the to the real life example of elon musk taking on twitter and he has his own views of free speech yeah. right the other people he says i am a free speech absolutist almost as if he is the last word on it now there are different views about what his definition of free speech is and how applicable it is and how double faced it is in america itself not everybody agrees with his definition of what is free speech many people believe that if donald trump or, or some people here would say if kangana ranaut comes back on twitter then it will be a, a violation of free speech and a violation of someone else's rights these are all subjective things now uh, uh, what 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 we would want to know is whether you believe that donald trump's new committee uh, sorry elon musk new committee which he is forming uh, on the whole issue of content moderation is promised to set up a new committee you're saying that will mean that 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 will be subject to indian government supervision 
as in if if the twitter committee does not do its job no, no, then no, then no, the final no. word on this the final word on this will be with the government of india no no i i i i I'll, i'll be very clear that these rules are not designed for company a or company b it is essentially i repeat again our goal and our objective is to partner with every internet intermediary with the ultimate goal that the internet the cyber space is a space where 120 crore indians can can safely come and go about the internet doing what they do so i think it's very important to understand that this is not adversarial for any platform these are do's and don'ts these are rules that platforms must follow in india if they are to maintain the status of being an intermediary an intermediary in india under indian law under the it act as a special protection for those who are intermediaries under section 79 because they are immune from prosecution for any content on their platform uh, a- every platform has the ob- has the choice of whether they want to choose to be an intermediary or whether they can choose not to be an intermediary and just carry content and be responsible for the content if they want to be an intermediary these are the rules and regulations that the government of india has specified and frankly these rules and regulations apply to any platform regardless of who their owner is what the ideology of the owner is or what the ideology of the users of the platform are yeah. these are rules to ensure that the internet in india and this is our duty to the digital nagriks of india that the internet in india is always safe I, trusted i have no doubt i have no doubt like i said accountable i have no doubt but early last year early last year when when this uh, when this so called farmers agitation happened uh, rajiv which i believe was wasn't really a farmers agitation there was a lot of khalistan propaganda uh, you know which were allowed at that point the ministry for electronics and it or ministry specifically had asked twitter to delete accounts which were flagged by security agencies as yes. accounts of khalistan sympathizers or or backed by pakistan which was spreading provocative content and they were not taken down completely and you know there's been this up and down battle all the time you know or oh, should it be taken down it won't be taken down and i know it's Absolutely. frustrating you know to deal with these companies they have a huge bureaucracy there was there was even a hashtag about modi planning farmer genocide and and and, and enabling violence in 2021 twitter yes. let it happen twitter let let it happen will 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 this kind of stuff be allowed in the future the the rules in the new amended it rules are up are very very clear on the issue of misinformation the the rules cast an absolute unambiguous obligation on intermediaries not on the media companies that report this but on the intermediaries that in a sense viralize those stories wittingly or unwittingly the obligation on the intermediaries is that if there is any misinformation patently false misleading they have to take that content down if they don't take the content down they st- they still have the uh, uh, option of having content reported to them and having 72 hours to take the content down the 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 time for ambiguity on content that is harmful to citizens that is misleading that is insightful there is no more ambiguity after these rules the intermediary if they choose to be an intermediary will have to follow these rules and from all i have already had a meeting with all the intermediaries today they are almost they are very comfortable with this partnership model and i have explained to them in extreme uh, detail that this is not an adversarial a challenge to their authority or the adversarial challenge to their turf this is about the government and platforms that are serving indian citizens working together to make sure that the internet is safe and trusted and exempt from and is excluding all of this content that is harmful to indian citizens and to uh, to the internet at large so so, so, so i think that era of uh, of intermediaries ducking and weaving on the issue of fake information insightful information is over and we are now in these new amended it rules which cast an unambiguous obligation on intermediaries 
to play their part can they in, say, in the internet safe Can they say we agree with this but see you in court? You know, this the approach of the social media companies has always been, uh, you know, to, to, no, look, to take refuge under the legal process and to say while well, we respect it, they, suppose they disagree with the decisions of the government appointed committee and say we don't agree. You are calling this Chinese propaganda. I don't think it's Chinese propaganda. No, no, it's they, my they, right to free no, expression. I, we'll see you in court and fight you under Article 19.1a. Can they do that? No, no. Look, I want to make clear again, Arnav. None. The nine conditions under Rule 3.1b are very specifically laid out in terms of what kind of content they are responsible for ensuring their platforms don't carry. There is nothing general, there is nothing vague, there is no word, we have even dropped the word defamatory, which was there in the earlier draft of the bill. We have dropped the word defamatory, defamation is something that the judicial process will discover and establish or not. So therefore, the nine conditions that the intermediaries have to meet in terms of the nature of the content that they have on their platforms or the nature of the content they cannot have on their platforms that they have to safeguard against that they have to enforce their own rules and guidelines is absolutely unambiguous there is nothing vague about it at all if any intermediary chooses to not follow the rules uh, they, it's uh, completely up to them this is their choice they lose the status of the as of being an intermediary almost immediately and of course they have the right, uh, we are a democracy, we are a country of uh, a, a robust judicial system. They are absolutely welcome to and have the right, whether they are an uh, American company or an Indian company, they have the right to go to court and seek uh, justice for what they believe is, uh, is, is unfair or wrong. But uh, the facts, the, 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 uh, the lay uh, out of this rules is the, con the consequence of not following the rules is very clear. If you don't follow the rules, you lose the intermediary status. You lose the intermediary status under section 79. You no longer have protection against prosecution uh, for any content on your platform. Uh, do you worry about this, uh, the, the sort of the Western and Latin's media narrative on this? We had a build up to it. I mean, let's be very clear. Even these companies have played a role in inciting a lot of people in the media who've gone on to say that the Indian government controls content moderation decisions. You know their favorites, Al Jazeera and the others. They say this is giving veto power no, to look, the government. They made it They made it an attack on free speech. Uh, is that over? Is that over or could that resurrect itself sometime in the future? If, if a fight happens between no, look, both sides over any key decision. No, look, for the, for, for the first time, for the first time ever, it is embedded in the rules that the constitutional rights of every Indian citizen must be respected by every platform, even if they are a foreign platform. It is there explicitly in the rules for the first time ever. We have said Article 14, Article 19 and Article 21, the right to non-discrimination, the right to free speech and the right to privacy and life cannot be violated by any platform. So we, the government is the trustee, the, the government under Prime Minister Narendra Modi ji is the trustee of these fundamental rights. So we don't need any foreign platform or a foreign media house or indeed uh, their friends in Delhi telling us about protecting constitutional rights about Indian citizens. We consider it our duty. But we also consider it our duty to deliver to the Indian digital nagrik a safe and trusted internet. We also consider it our duty to the digital nagrik to deliver accountability relationship between big tech platforms and the Indian citizen. And the rules are meant to do that. The grievance appellate committee that is being mischaracterized by some vested interests as a power grab is absolutely anything but that. The grievance appellate committee is an appellate mechanism in the event the grievance process that we have put into place, which is a voluntary grievance and redressal process that the industry has, fails or break down, breaks down. And the reason I say this is, one of the problems we have noticed after May 2021, between May 2021 and today, is that many platforms have just naam ke vaste for just optics 
appointed a grievance officer but are doing very little to address the grievances of the consumers that they serve make money from and monetize so that we believe is an unacceptable situation every indian digital nagrik who is working off or is using a service or buying a product or uh, using a product of a digital platform or intermediary must have his or her grievance 100% addressed the grievance appellate committee is simply an appellate body that sits in the event a platform does not address the grievance of a citizen and i have said this very clearly repeatedly as a matter of fact these it rules have taken an additional 3 months to notify only because the ministry and the government waited 3 months on the industry to come with a self regulatory model on the grievance appellate committee this issue came up during public consultations i offered on behalf of the government that if the industry came with a self regulatory uh, model of grievance uh, redressal we would be more than happy to incorporate that in the it rules i waited for two and a half months to three months waiting for the industry to come with a response which they means, did not and so we had to go with the grievance which appellate means, which committee which means there is a standoff even today which, which arnav i have told them as we which means there no, is a standoff even today or not i'm, so, so, I'm sorry i was saying that which means about which this. means there's a standoff you have met them before you uh, you are a powerful minister they will not oppose you but they they are not comfortable yet i mean after all in just a few couple of i think just this month or was it this month when when twitter challenged the confidentiality clause in the it rules and they went to court about it they said you you're not giving us information on why the account is blocked so there is a i'm not saying the trust deficit i'm saying there's a sort of uneasy situation right now uh, you, you, when you say you've sat with them they understand yeah, so it's all happening I, look, i are they really comfortable or is this just a lull before a, a bigger storm No, no, uh, no, no, no. Uh, uh, no, Arun, two points here. One is on the the grievance appellate committee and the mischaracterization by pa- some people that this is the power grab or a content grab by the government. I just uh, wanted to clarify that that is not the case. Even today, I mentioned to them that if the industry was forthcoming with a self-regulatory model to deal with appellate uh, grievance appellate situations. the government is happy to incorporate that in the rules and remove the grievous appellate committee so that offer still stands we waited on the industry for 3 months they did not come with a solution and so we had to go ahead and protect the digital nagrics with the grievous appellate committee in terms of the stand off i really don't believe that it is in anybody's interest to characterize the relationship between government and intermediaries and the citizens and nagrics as adversarial we are three important stakeholders of the indian internet we all want the same end goal we want the internet to be a place where good uh, abounds and the bad is uh, on the back foot we want the internet to be a place which creates more and more opportunities in the digital economy for investments and jobs we want the internet to be a place where every indian citizen is empowered remember one thing arnab we are the largest connected democracy in the world and by 25 26 we will be one of the largest connected nations in the world so we want this internet this is not a small internet this is going to be one of the biggest internet uh, uh, cyber spaces in the world so we want this to be a partnership between the government and the industry and the digital nagrics to make sure that our common goal of a good open safe and trusted and accountable internet is is what no, no. we we get and we deliver to no, our no, nagrics I, I, I and businesses I and startups think, i personally think it's excellent that we are using that leverage uh and 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 we absolutely should i'm just a little skeptical about whether these social media platforms will comply i, I just feel that they 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 no, they, look, they, uh, they they you know i i believe I, they don't I, respect I, our national security it is my job or not it is my job yes no i, I look i don't necessarily want to uh, to persuade anybody to start believing what i believe or uh, seeing the future as i see it uh, or as the prime minister sees it that is not our job but we certainly will do our best to advocate and evangelize the benefits of working together in partnership where people still refuse to see the reason and so refuse to uh, follow the rules and laws the consequences as as i outlined follow that is natural consequence 
of not following the rules and the laws. Truly. Uh, one, one more area I just wanted to pick on uh, with you, uh, Mr. Chandrasekhar, is, you know, the, the misuse of uh, monopolistic positions by companies like Google, for example, to dictate terms and conditions which favor it. I'm, I'm talking specifically about the advertising issue. You know, we, for example, news publishers across India, across the world, we spend money, we employ people, uh, we have huge capital and, 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 and workforce expenses. Uh, but, but we receive a tiny fraction of advertising from these companies like Google. In fact, the, the revenue to news publications by Google has not been challenged in India yet. In Australia passed laws back in 2021 that required Google and Facebook to pay for news. But in India, which is, after all, the news media is the cornerstone of a healthy democracy. There is, it's a completely one-sided relationship. Are you looking at it? Why, why, why aren't you looking at it closely enough? Are you thinking about it? Mr. Chandrasekhar, you have enough exposure to, to both technology and the news business. No, so Arnab, I think uh, uh, you haven't been following me closely enough and I would uh, encourage you to do, uh, do follow my statements and my uh, views on, uh, on, on things, on policy making. I have already said and I said it on record about a few months ago that I believe there are there is a need for a new legislative framework and the government of India today is working on a Digital India Act which will replace the IT Act and uh, that will of course as, as is uh, the, the specified norm laid down by our Honorable Prime Minister it will go through extensive public consultation with all the stakeholders in the tech space and the internet space. One of the areas that the DIA certainly will look at is this issue of monetization of content online and whether there is an imbalance between those who create the content and those who monetize the content. So I think this is an issue that we, have, we understand very well, is an issue that needs to be talked through, uh, debated and uh, a formulation or a framework that is seen as fair, fair, win, win. And it is particularly important in India, Arnab, not just because of the news genre, India is increasingly becoming a highly creative space where many, many young Indians are creating uh, content startups uh, and all they have right now to, uh, the only way they have to monetize their content is to go to Insta Reels or YouTube videos and the monetization of all that is usually very one-sided because of the demand supply imbalance. So I think uh, it is an area that is certainly worth having a debate and discourse around. It is certainly important from our own national interest point of view because there are hundreds and thousands and lakhs and crores of young Indians that are going to be in the creative industry, are in the creative industry and will continue to be in the creative industry and continue to expand the boundaries and genres of the content that they come up with. And as the devices get more powerful, as post-processing software get much more powerful and easy and intuitive to use, Every person is essentially becoming a producer, star, actor, scriptwriter, and generating content. You know the way OTT has transformed the film industry. Uh, and, uh, you know, we can safely assume that these new devices and these new technologies are, is going to uh, transform even deeper the creative content industry in India and, uh, and allow India to really create content for the whole world. And so, therefore, given all of that, opportunity, I think it's worth a relook and it's worth, certainly worth a deep look at the economics and the dynamics currently that are in place and the kind of economics and dynamics that we need going forward to make do, this Do you have a timeline in mind there, Mr. Chandrasekhar? Because do you have a timeline in mind? Things are going so fast and, and, and you know, uh, it's really what we are talking about. We, I, was at a, I was at a meeting recently and people are talking about the survival yeah. of news publications being at stake because of this arbitrary distribution of revenue uh, by Google. You have a timeline in mind. Is there something the news industry can yeah. do? Uh, petition you perhaps? Become party to no, uh, no, the decision-making I mean, process in my, any way? No, obviously, no, obviously my... No, obviously my timeline is not uh, aligned to uh, the news industry's uh, economic dynamics, but I can certainly say this, that we have done significant amounts of work. Uh, the Prime Minister has made it absolutely clear that we must, these laws that we are bringing, these new laws, whether the Digital Personal Data Protection Law or the Digital India Act, 
our laws that are to have a life of the next decade because it's India decade for the next 10 years. And therefore, we will go through this very carefully, very sure-footedly with a lot of consultation from our stakeholders, whether they're consumers, whether they're lawyers, whether they're judges, whether they're um, you know, content creators and uh, indeed the industry. So uh, I, I don't want to put ourselves under pressure with an artificial timeline, but there is a clear process that we see. And I don't see uh, a, a, anything wrong if I, I predict that we will have a Digital India Act for discussion at least by early 2023. That's fantastic. My, my last question to you. Uh, you have been a very strong votary of national security in every way. You've come from a forces family yourself. Mr. Chandrasekhar, my last question to you is on the national security angle. Now, of course, are we vulnerable from an IT point of view? And I'm not just talking from the point of view of what you've done. This is what you're doing today. I believe will have a huge impact long term in terms of stopping these psycho ops, etc. But but I'm talking about more fundamental things like Chinese influence, for example, you know, vulnerability to other sovereign nations. Uh, from a national security perspective, a lot more needs to be done to make sure that the spread of our digital, uh, you know, uh, digital network at no point is used by our enemies to harm our national security. Look, Arnab, I mean, obviously, uh, I'm, I, I have to tell you that this is uh, uh, to make sure our internet is safe, our tech ec ecosystem is safe and trusted. These are all uh, very significantly high priorities that the Prime Minister has laid down for the government as a whole. Uh, you know that tech is, uh, uh, is in various different ministries, tech regulation and tech policy making is across various ministries. And the whole issue of infrastructure, all of that is also across various ministries. But uh, there is a clear sense of mission, there is a clear sense of purpose. And there are clear objectives that we today as a nation are on, a, in a sense, you know, we are really at an inflection point and we are growing our tech opportunity significantly, whether it's electronics, semiconductors, IT, AI, blockchain, Web 3.0. Uh, high performance computing, all of those areas, all of those, the world is accelerating, we are accelerating. So we understand that the underlying need to keep our system secure, our, uh, our um, internet secure and safe, all these are also important, adjacent, parallelly operating priorities. So I think we are aware of that. I don't want to talk too much in detail about this in, a, in an interview. But I can, I can assure through you, uh, the, our countrymen and your viewers, that our Prime Minister is completely focused on this mission of a trillion dollar digital economy. And his government is working very hard to fulfill his goals. And I think uh, all of the things that need to be done for that, we, we are doing and we will continue to do. Well, uh you know, to wrap it up, viewers, uh, this has been fairly explanatory by Rajiv Chandrasekhar. I'd only wrap up by saying that what it means for us, I mean, for me as a broadcaster here, is that if you wish to, and if you have a problem with, if you have a problem with what Twitter is doing or Facebook is doing or whatever these intermediaries are doing, you have, the citizen has, as Rajiv always says, the digital nagrik, the digital nagrik has a, a way, a method, a structure through which he can question them, if not take them on. So I think that's a great move. It empowers the citizen a lot. And Rajiv, thank you very much. You extreme, look extremely focused on these changes and look forward to talking to you more about changes in India's digital thank environment. You. Thank you. Style? For me, it's the pursuit of timeless elegance. Crisp, clean, classic, subtle brilliance. You don't know what it is that catches your eye, but it does, you know. The cut, the color, the lines. There's something in the essence of the evergreen. You feel special, selected. That's when I know I found the right fit, when I feel selected. And for now, moving on to more, uh, more news coming in from across the country. Taking stock of the incident, the DGCA has ordered a detailed probe into uh, the cause and suitable follow-up action that shall be taken in 
for uh, in relation to uh, the flight uh, operation uh, with regard to the indigo flight meanwhile the ministry of civil aviation has also ordered officials to submit a report into the incident after looking into it the air quality of the national capital continues to deplete now the latest forecast shows that the air quality will remain in very poor category for the next 3 days पूरे सांस और फूलते रहते हैं फिलहाल गर्मी दुनिया भर का प्रदूषण है प्रदूषण बहुत है हाँ पूरी आग में जलन होती है हर चीज होती है ऐसे लिए BJP's uh, IT cell head Amit Malviya said that he has decided to file criminal and civil proceedings against news website The Wire on alleged 